What is going on, gunfighters? Welcome to Gunfighter Life, where we talk about guns and gunfighting the right way, with almighty God at the center, Judeo-Christian values, and real-world first-hand experience. Today, no bio, just get into the nitty-gritty. It's an episode that I think I should do, but I might forget about, and I'm driving home from bird hunting, specifically turkey. There's a fall turkey season that's in for a couple more days, and I thought I'd go try and notch my tag tonight. Well, I didn't. I did see a moose, which is pretty cool. Got within, I don't know, 30-some 30, 30 yards of a moose. That was cool. But alas, I don't have a tag for a moose, and it's not moose season. Saw a deer, too. Although, uh, did not see any turkey. So, on that, I was thinking, and some questions that I get lead me to believe that not everybody really understands the world of the shotgun. And it's specifically shot. So I thought I would do a down and dirty, quick, super basic, as basic as I can make it, episode on shot for shotguns. Decoding the shotgun. So what I will do is just, without making it overly complicated, because you can get down into some rabbit holes on shotguns. I'm going to go with some shot sizes and describe them and what they're used for just to not overwhelm you not so you're drinking from a fire hose let's start with number nines number nines is probably the smallest you're going to find they do make smaller shot but for common stuff number nines very small stuff you're talking the smallest stuff you're probably gonna hunt like quail and dove not that you can't use bigger shot but you're talking about the smallest of the small there Probably more common for this is eights and seven and a halves. Seven and a half, I don't know why it's just a half size, it's just a real common size, seven and a half. But uh, seven and a half shot is probably some of the most common shot you're going to find. It's like maybe your cheaper box stuff at Walmart. And that's generally seven and a half and eight shot is good for sporting clays. You'll see that often for shooting the clay targets out of the air whether it's skeet or sporting clays or trap or something like that. Some people may decide they want a slightly different shot size, but it's around that ballpark. That's also good for quail and doves. Some people may use it just because it's cheap for rabbits and squirrels. What I prefer, and I recommend that if you're going to do that, you jump up to the next one we're going to talk about, and that's number six shot. Number six, lead shot, is a phenomenal all-around small game. It's a little big for pheasants and doves, but you can do it. Um... It's a decent size for rabbits and squirrels. It's a decent size. It used to be for waterfowl before they restricted it to steel-only shot. But steel shot is its own thing. If you have to use steel shot, it plays by its own rules. Perhaps that should be another episode. I don't want to confuse you. But number six shot. Number six also is like the minimum you could get away with for turkey, I think. And you might think, well, how could you use the same shot for turkey? But remember, for turkey you are not aiming for the body of the turkey like you're aiming for the body because you're not usually shooting them out of the air. You're aiming for the head and the neck. And if you look at the head and the neck on a turkey, it's about the same size as a dove or a quail. Um, So six shot, lead shot, if you have a good choke and you get enough pellets on target, will certainly do for turkey. Most people for turkey and moving up to pheasants will go to six is okay, but five is probably better for you might see some number two shot in there. So that's what we're talking about. And if you're talking about uh, even bigger than that, you'll get into B and BB and BBB. This is for your big birds. Now, most of your bigger birds are going to hunt like that, except for turkey. If it's legal to use BB or, or bigger shot, it'll certainly work well for turkey if you have the proper choke. But a lot of that you're going to see nowadays is in steel shot for waterfowl because it's mandated. And then you move up into your tee shot. Tee shot for your big of the big birds like the geese, Canadian geese and things like that. Maybe even bigger like Sandhill Crane if they let you use it for turkey. And that's going to be your tee shot. And tee and up into triple tee kind of starts crossing over into your buckshot sizes. Now your buckshot, your smallest that I'm aware of that they make for buckshot is number four. Number four buck is about 24 caliber. It is my favorite and preferred hunting buckshot load. I know, heresy, most people say double lot. Um, But I have taken a number of animals, uh, 
shot bear, deer. I like number four buck. I also like it for a go-to home defense load. Number four buck is going to be about 24 caliber, a standard two and three quarter inch shell. You're gonna get roughly 27 pellets. It may differ by load, but that's a pretty standard. If you move into a three inch magnum load, you're talking 41 pellets. It's not real common, but it's not uncommon. And I like number four buck uh, for all the reasons I mentioned. It's not always my go-to, but it's often my go-to. The next one, not real common, but a really good load is number one buck if you can find it. Number one buck is going to give you quite a bit more pellets than double lot, not as many as number four. And it's a good in between if you can't make up your mind. It's also just a good load if your shotgun likes it. Number one buck is a good is a good load. And obviously the name denotes buckshot. And it really, shotguns are individualistic and so are chokes with buckshot. You've really got to test it out. But certainly can be used for deer at reasonable ranges. And... It's also obviously good for personal protection, home defense, truck gun type use. And then the most common military law enforcement round is going to be double lot buck. Double lot buck traditionally is just a standard nine pellet for a two and three quarter inch load. That's your standard. Again, it's a military law enforcement standard. Uh, it's, It's not a bad load. Obviously each pellet is gonna be much larger. You only get nine of them though. And depending on what your shotgun likes or doesn't like or what you're doing, it's a good load. It's also, if if I was running a go-to load in a truck shotgun, it's good because if you're shooting out of a truck or out of a vehicle, there's a good chance you might have to shoot into a vehicle for any kind of tactical scenario. And since each pellet has more mass, it can transfer more of that mass through a barrier like sheet metal. So uh, there's something to think about there. Again, it is the military law enforcement standard. For that reason, it's almost certainly by far the most common buckshot load so that's something to consider and it has a value all its own when you can get what's called a walmart load there is a triple lot buck it's not nearly as common it does have same some good uh some good defensive use and some good hunting use if you're going to step up the triple lot because the pellets are so big often you might want to step up to a magnum length shell because if you're doing it for hunting the shot to shot recovery time is not nearly as important because you're going to have to reacquire the target anyway and i would hate to see the thing that you have to double tap with triple up buck in a tactical scenario but triple up buck does exist i should say double up buck i believe is 33 caliber off the top of my head and number or uh, triple lot is 36 caliber if i remember off the top of my head then we get oh and i also might mention you may find some oddball sizes in different gauges my default i'm talking about 12 gauge but if you get into like 410 often in 410 you will find triple up buck because you can only get one buckshot side by side in there and if you can only if you can't stack them side by side why not go with the biggest you can get that's why you'll commonly see triple up buck in a lowly little 410 which is a great all-around caliber for hunting and stuff like that but you'll often see like triple up buck in a 410 because if you can only stack one, you might as well stack the biggest you can get if you're going directly on top of each other. And in something like uh, a 20 gauge, just because of the way pellets stack, you may find like number three buck. Uh, so just realize that. And I should have mentioned in the beginning, but it's probably obvious by now to anybody that's good at basic counting that the bigger the number, the smaller the shot. So number nine shot is smaller than number eight shot is smaller than number six shot. You get the idea. And all the bird shot sizes are smaller than the buck shot sizes. So if somebody says number four shot, number four shot is nowhere near the same size as number four buck. It's not even close. So the smallest buck shot size is bigger than the bigger than the uh, largest bird shot size. And I think the crossover there is triple T. I think triple T shot and... Uh, and uh number four buck are almost identical but anyway the large the largest bird shot size is going to be smaller than your smallest buckshot size now let's talk briefly about slugs you get well you get three main flavors the first one i'll talk about and then we'll write it off because it takes a specialty shotgun and for doing that you probably know what you're doing but a sabo slug a sabo slug is meant to be fired not through a traditional shotgun but through a rifle barreled shotgun through a shotgun with a rifled barrel or maybe a rifle choke, but it's a specialty thing. You're not just like throwing it in 
using it interchangeably with birdshot in the field. It's a specialty thing. Sabo slugs are their own thing. Don't buy those at the store unless you have a Sabo gun. They shoot a subcaliber, meaning smaller than the gauge, wrapped in a plastic sleeve, if you will, called a Sabo. Um, usually for greater accuracy and longer range if you're doing it out of a specialty shotgun. The two main ones you're going to use out of, tra- out of a traditional shotgun are going to be Bernecke slugs, which are more common in Europe and have some real advantages, if I'm being honest. And in America, by far the most common is the Foster-style slug, both named, I believe, after the inventors Bernecke and Foster. Foster-type slug, often called a rifled slug. It has grooves cut into it uh, that do two things. They do, I have seen footage where it does actually spin the slug, not to the degree of rifling, but a little bit. Whether that aids in accuracy or not, Uh, the jury's kind of still out on that but what it does do is allow it to choke down through different choke sizes and it will say on the box what you should fire it through a lot of these will recommend through um, cylinder improved cylinder modified generally don't recommend you shooting them through a full full uh, choked gun although you might get away with it for a time or two but anyway it should say on the box of slugs and that's the foster slug the Bernecke slug is a little bit different in design it kind of has the wad or a stabilizer attached to the rear of the slug and it's generally solid with the thing screwed into the back of it where the foster slug is generally hollow both will get the job done if you want the ultimate and like deep penetration like bear defense generally a foster slug will work but a bernecki slug is a little bit better and other than that the foster slug is far more common in america so if you're talking about like going to walmart that's probably what you're going to find And it works fine on deer and elk and things like that. If you know where your shotgun shoots and you keep it at reasonable ranges. And without getting too far in the weeds, hopefully I didn't get too complicated there. But that is a simple down and dirty breakdown of shotgun shot sizes. Real quick, some other side notes. As you might imagine that uh, shotguns, both the shot sizes... And the gauges kind of work like opposite day. So the way the gauge works real quick is the number of lead balls of that diameter that equal a pound. So 12 round lead balls and a 12 gauge equals one pound. It's a 12 gauge. 20 lead balls of that diameter will equal a 20 gauge, will equal one pound. So a 20 gauge is smaller than a 12 gauge. The standard, again, when you just say shotgun, I think 12 gauge. 20 gauge are great. I have one for upland bird hunting. They're great for... Obviously, the shells are going to be lighter if you're just hunting upland game or small game, quail, or you just want to grab a pocket full of shells and go hunt rabbits and squirrels. 20 gauge will do fine. It's a great gauge, and it's certainly enough for tactical applications. It's just not as common. It's it's certainly the amount of power in a 20 gauge is certainly good with the right buckshot load or or a decent foster slug for that matter. They're just not as common, especially in the tactical arena, but they're certainly good and usually preferred for like upland game and things like that because you can walk a lot of miles and doing some upland game hunting. Uh, The other real common one, now there's a 16, which is kind of a dead and dying one, so we'll skip over it. There's a 28 gauge. It's almost exclusively specialty double gun upland game bird type hunting. And then there's a 410. The 410 is fairly common. Even though the shells are smallest, they tend to be the most expensive. So, just keep that in mind. They are going to be the smallest and lightest of the shells. They are a great option if you want to carry more ammo, if you just want a small, light, recoiling gun. Obviously, when you go down in gauges, you go down in the amount of pellets. If you're talking about number six shot, let's pick number six. It's a good rabbit squirrel load. You want to get into small game hunting. Obviously, if you're talking a standard length shell, In each gauge, you're going to get less pellets for the smaller gauges. That should go without saying. Anyway, just, again, I want to keep it super basic, so I need to be diligent at being concise in this episode. With that, your tactical tip of the day. One of the great things about the shotgun is its versatility. One And it's something that I don't often, I try and stay away from recommending products, but sometimes I do. I'm not going to recommend a specific one, but it's called a butt cuff. Yeah, it's got a funny name, but it's something that goes on the stock of a rifle or a shotgun that holds extra cartridges. In this case, shotgun shells. You can get them for like probably under $5. Just a simple, stretchy thing that holds shotgun shells. 
And the tactical tip is, depending on your setup, have different shot shell sizes if you can hunt. If you're, if you're, the only thing you can hunt that day is squirrel. That's the only thing in. Then I guess it doesn't matter. But if you're talking about like a tactical application, buckshot and slugs, it's a really fast way to top off your shotgun. Also, a tactical tip, turn the different shells upside down. So like on my setup, I will generally run buckshot with the rim of the shell up. So I know when I grab it tactily, when I reach over and grab to do a reload, I got buckshot. If I want a slug, I reach over and grab it and I run my slugs upside down from the bottom. And I can simply just push them out and grab them. And it's a real quick, easy way to distinguish between shells. You can do that for buckshot and slugs with a tactical shotgun. You can do it for, let's say, number five shot and number seven and a half shot. If both quail and uh, pheasant are in, which they are right now. I wasn't quail and pheasant hunting today, but I have been lately. If they're both in at the same time and I can hunt both, right? And I get into a patch of pheasant, I would much rather have pheasant than quail. Even if I think the odds of seeing one is 50-50, I'm going to go for the pheasant shot because a pheasant is a lot more meat than a quail. And I can use that same technique, run the, and I would just, my default is run the heavier one, whatever one that is, upside down. So when I grab it, I know it's a different shell. And if I want to grab and reload, top off the shotgun, even without looking at it with the gun up in my shoulder, I can tell right away which it is that I want to load. If you're talking about field use, you can also just run your different shot cells in different pockets, right? If you got a standard size jacket, your 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 hand pockets on the bottom, you can run, you know, number six shot in one side, number seven and a half in the other for different size birds. Or if you want to take a shot at a rabbit or something, you get the idea. But that's one of the great things. Whatever your system is, have a system that you can quickly in the field or in a tactical scenario differentiate shells. Because that is a great thing about the shotgun is the versatility. Your tactical verse of the day. The earth the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When you're out, if you're out hunting, just remember the beauty of God's creation. Just enjoy all the beautiful things that God created. I might not have gotten a turkey tonight. In fact, the last time I saw a turkey, I didn't seal a deal on one. I saw a bunch of turkeys. Um, but you know what I did see? God's beautiful creation. I got to see a moose. I got to see a deer. I got to see the sunset over beautiful rolling North Idaho hills. Just beautiful God's creation. And that is a gift in and of itself. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Thanks for listening and have a blessed day.